Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a mod that's uh, kind of geeky, I suppose. Uh, a little bit boring, but it's also not boring because of what it's going to allow us to do. Uh, today we're going to be basically allowing the wideband that I fit uh, quite a long time ago to be able to talk to the laptop. Now, when I'm trying to uh, refine the map or check things, I can check boost, I can check uh, pretty much anything and log it. However, there's one thing I can't do, and that is check the actual air fuel ratio. So that's why I fit an uh, AFR sensor in the exhaust, and then I also put the gauge on the dash. So when I'm driving the car, I can look over and I can see what the, uh, the air fuel ratio is doing. The limitations of my current setup are that uh, it's nothing more than a gauge. So I can drive down the road, I can put my foot down, look at the wide band, make sure the air fuel ratio is where I want it to be. Um, while trying to hold on to the car, I gotta think, oh, it's gone a little bit rich there. I gotta instantly look, where's it gone rich? Where am I on the RPM? Um, then go back to the laptop, make a tweak, take a bit of fuel out, add a bit of fuel. But uh, there's only so accurate you can get while doing that. So I've got it to a point now with the new injectors that the AFRs are safe, but they're a bit wavy. When you go through the power, they're, they're fluctuating a little bit back and forth. So the only way I can get the AFRs actually perfect is by having a logger. Okay, so we only need to actually use two pins on this connector. That's a ground and a five volt. So I'm gonna dismantle it. So we're going to cut this end because we don't need it. Okay, so I've now desoldered it all from that. So we just got the five volt and also the ground. Now I got this off earlier. So because it's obviously a track car, I don't really want to be uh, digging around looking for the cable. So I'm going to just fit a port right here. These are the same part as the Lancers. So if it ever does become a, a classic car, it can be reversed. Okay, so I've dremeled out a little hole there with my carbide bit, then pre-drilled two holes. And uh, I had to re-solder the wires because the others were so thin and I don't trust them basically. So I put some thicker ones on and not only that, they snapped anyway. So uh, there we are, looks really uh, flush and central. So just gonna fit the screws. So I think that looks pretty good. It's nice and square, nice and central, and easily accessible. If this was a road car, I'd probably hide that somewhere, but uh, it's not, it's a track car, so if something goes wrong, I'd wanna be looking around, fumbling under the dash, looking for a cable. I wanna just be able to plug it straight in and fix the problem, so uh, I thought I'd put it somewhere really, really easy to access. Now, I'm just gonna refit it, then I'm gonna connect one wire to the ground, and then one wire to the five volt out of the, uh, the wide band, and then it's pretty much done. Okay, so I've just been tracing the wire that I run from the air fuel gauge, um, whenever it was I fit them, and it's actually under the glove box. So um, I'm gonna put everything back together now, and uh, fit the new port, run the wires, and then I'm gonna go to the glove box area then, and actually wire it in. Okay, so it's the next day and I Amazon Prime ordered a serial to USB adapter. Now, don't be a silly billy, as they say. Um, make sure you fully understand the instructions. Basically, I thought the pinout was from the face, as we're looking at it now, but the pinout in the instructions was the other way around. So it's only taken me about five hours to diagnose the problem. I've been using Hyper Terminal, which is um, basically a piece of software that allows you to talk to different computers. You can, you know, connect to uh, landlines, all sorts of things. So basically, I've uh, been fiddling around 
all day and I realized that the laptop and the wideband weren't communicating at all. So the signal wasn't getting from this port to that USB port. So it wasn't Evo scan, not detecting the wideband. It was simply a communication error. Now um, I've just been messing around with these two wires. I've switched around the things and every time I connect them on there, it will start logging every sort of tenth of a second what the wideband is actually showing. 99.9 .9 was heat, 29 was obviously the AFR that was showing on there because the car's off. So um, yeah, just a little bit of a silly thing really, but it's wasted a whole day. Uh, make sure you actually get the pinout correct. The AEM instructions, the pinout is from the back of that port, not from the front. So it shouldn't be too difficult to remove. I'll just desolder the two wires, flip them over, and then uh, hopefully EvoScan will start understanding or communicating then with the wideband. Now, why is it that we can actually talk to the wideband gauge? Well, basically, it's not just a 0 to 5 volt connection. There is room for inaccuracy with that. You have to calibrate it and it can go out of spec, things like that. So you'd have to basically convert or tell the laptop that 0 0.15 volts is this AFR, 0 0.3 volts is that AFR. And you'd have to sort of do it like that. Well, you can get interference with that. You can get problems and it can be uh, calibrated out of spec. Whereas the way we're doing it here, why it's really good is it's actually sending a digital signal from the computer in that gauge to the computer there. So we get the exact AFR that the gauge is saying. So it's been a couple of months since that footage was filmed, as you can see from my, uh, my hair. But uh, right now, I'm going to show you a log that I actually made with Steve-O the Evo. Now, this was during mapping, so uh, the AFRs are a little bit wavy. Um, um, I'm still tweaking a few things. But uh, I'm just going to show you really uh, what it looks like when um, that logger is actually doing its job. So this is actually a log. Um, I hope you can see it. I, I'm sorry I can't uh, screen record it better, but the laptop, which I only really use for... Evo related things it's just not fast enough uh, to be recording but um, here we can see a line and uh, one of those lines is actually the wide band output so we got the blue line um, a purple line which is not count and uh, yeah we've got a few different things being logged now at any point we can look and we can actually diagnose exactly why anything is doing anything now, I'll give you an example Right here, for some reason, the AFR goes from 10.5 all the way up to 10.9, or actually 11.1. .1. And if I was just driving the car, holding on tight, trying to tame 27 PSI a boost, there's absolutely no way I would be able to tell you with as much accuracy why that is leaning out as I can looking at it here with the laptop. Now, if I actually go onto uh, this point of the log, I can tell you exactly that at three, uh, 309 load at uh, 6,312 RPM, we made 28 PSI a boost, and the AF ratio was 11.1. .1. I can actually find that exact point in the map. I can make a change and I can richen it up or I can lean it out. So that's really the beauty of that uh, logger in action. It allows us to know exactly what's going on with the car and log loads and loads of different things. And we can reverse engineer any issues or any problems uh, with that logger. So hopefully you've enjoyed that video. I have got quite a lot of content filmed. Uh, I just got to start editing it now. So uh, you might be seeing uh, quite a few more videos of me in the near future. So. I'm sure I'll see you again. Well, I won't see you, but you'll see me uh, probably in the next couple of days. So uh, yeah, thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next one.